The next consideration is the strength of acids. As I said before, um, scientists already knew about acids because what they could do is they could take substances and show that they had sort of a pattern in their chemical reactions, in their physical, physical properties, things like that. But what they saw was if they looked at a specific reaction, for example, taking an acid, putting in, it into water, putting copper metal into that water, and then watching as the acid reacted with the copper metal, creating a gas and causing the metal to dissolve. When they looked at that reaction, they saw that different acids caused that reaction to occur at different speeds. Some caused it to occur much more quickly, and others were very slow. Or even you could find reaction or uh, acids that would do the acid reaction with some metals, but were not strong enough to react with other metals. So they had a sense that acids had a different sort of chemical strength. Bronsted Lowry tried to then use their acid base equilibrium equation to quantify the relative strength of acids. Now, if we look at the Bronsted-Lowry acid base equilibrium, we could write an equilibrium expression, K equilibrium, K-E-Q. The K equilibrium expression is the concentration of each product in the numerator over the concentration of each reactant in the denominator. If there were coefficients, we would put those coefficients up here because we would put the product twice and then square it or three times and then cube it or so forth. Now, what they then said was if we look as this acid becomes stronger, it should react more, we should get a higher concentration of product. So this should become larger, this would become smaller, and K equilibrium would become a larger number. And that is true. The problem is, is that the strength of the base, the identity of the base, could also affect the reaction because the strength of the base is not a constant. So what they did was they decided to use a standard base. And the standard base they chose was water because it was very clear that there were many acids that when you put them into water, they reacted with the water by acid-base reaction and created hydronium ions. Now, if we then write this equation with water as our specific base, hydronium becomes our specific conjugate acid, we can rewrite K equilibrium. So now we would have this, where conjugate base, hydronium in the numerator, because those are the products, and then acid, and water in the denominator. And we can, in fact, do all of our K equilibrium measurements and use this. However, one of the things that was discovered was that if we kept the concentration of the acid relatively low, then not a whole lot of water would react because in a solution of water, there's like 55 and a half moles of water per liter. So if we used only, say, a tenth mole of acid, then at the end we would have 55.4 liters, roughly, of water, uh, sorry, moles of water left over. The change in the amount of water would be very small. It would essentially be a constant. So what they did was they divided that out. And they came up with this expression, which has only the conjugate base hydronium over the acid and they called this K acidity which basically just means the equilibrium constant for acidity. When they started doing this what they discovered was that the value of Ka did not change by just little numbers it changed by orders of magnitude. So we might for example have 3 times 10 to the second, and we might have 5 times 10 to the negative 3, and so forth. 
and it became very inconvenient to compare those numbers because of the confusion between changing the size of the number in front of the scientific uh, notation and then changing the size of the exponent in the scientific notation. So what they did was they used an already existing mathematical operator called P. P is basically an operator. It means it's something that you take and you do to a number to get a new number. P is defined as minus the log. So if we take a number and we do P of it, we plug it into our calculator and do minus the log of that number. So P of Ka is the negative log of Ka. Now this is in some ways an unfortunate number or an unfortunate operator because of the minus sign. Because what happens is, as we saw, as the acid gets stronger, Ka will get bigger. There'll be less acid left over, there'll be more of the products. But when we do minus the log of that, a larger Ka becomes a more negative number. And so what we see is as the acid becomes stronger, the value of pKa becomes more negative. It can start as positive numbers, but it becomes more negative. In other words, it approaches zero, and then it actually becomes negative numbers. That can be a little confusing until you get used to that. This is a table of the pKa's of many common acids that we might encounter in organic chemistry. Now, the good news is you don't have to memorize this table. This table will be provided on exams. The bad news is that you do have to very well understand this table, understand the trends, and understand how to use the table. This table basically starts with acids in the left column, arranged from strongest acid down to, as we go down, very weakest acid. Those acids will have an associated pKa number, which represents the pKa of this acid as generally measured and accepted. One of the things you will find is that, depending on where you look, Different acids, uh, an acid might have different pKa numbers because there are issues with pKa, particularly once we get into acids that don't effectively function in water, like these, where the pKa measurements are actually made in a different solvent and that different solvent changes somewhat the pKa. So then they have to do manipulations to try to relate it to what it would be if it were in water. Then, in this column is the conjugate base that you would get if you took that acid and removed a hydrogen. And the hydrogen that should be removed is indicated in bold. This creates bases. Now, we call them conjugate bases in this context, but they're fundamentally just bases. And one of the things that we see is there is essentially a reciprocal relationship. A strong acid will have a weak conjugate base. Down here, a weak acid will have a strong conjugate base. So we can see that this table really organizes acids from strong to weak and bases from weak to strong. And we can use it really to determine both of those properties when comparing these substances. The other thing you should note about the way this table is set up is that I have given specific numbers for specific acids, specific bases, with specific carbon groups. So for example, I have given a number for CH3OH, ethyl OH. However, it turns out that in general, carbon groups and even non-acidic hydrogens can be replaced and they don't make a huge difference in the value. So if I, for example, asked you to give me the approximate um, pKa of isopropyl OH2, you would use this number. If I asked you to give me the P 
pKa of the carboxylic acid that had carboxyl CH2CH3. So ethyl instead of methyl, you would give me this number. If I ask you to give me the pKa of CH3SH, where one of these hydrogens has been replaced by a methyl group, you would give me this number. So they more or less are similar. It won't be exactly the same, but we have a saying, good enough for OCHEM. When we do numbers in OCHEM, we just need to get close. We don't need to nail it to five significant figures. The other thing you're going to notice is that there are going to be species on here that are acids of a type that you have never seen before. And some of these, particularly these ones that have alpha, we will not discuss until next semester. You will also notice that there are some substances that appear in both columns. And this is a source of confusion. I would say the primary one to be worried about is water. If we look, there is water as an acid and then water as a conjugate base. The reason for that is that we already know that water can make a bond to a third proton and become hydronium. And hydronium ion is an acid. Bases come over, they remove hydrogens from it. But when they do that, the hydronium atom becomes water. So hydronium, when it acts like an acid, has a conjugate base of water. So water's in the base column here. Correspondingly, we know that water has hydrogens that can be taken away by bases to make hydroxide. So in that context, water is the acid, hydroxide is the conjugate base. So in general, you're going to need to be very careful and make sure that when you are looking for a species, you are looking for it in the right place. If you need to know how water, what its strength is as a base, we need to look up here in the base column. But if we need to look at the strength of water as an acid, we need to look down here in the acid column.